is to do evil and the commitment to yourselves. That's the selfishness that we've been taught in a, in a place called USA, which means under Satan's authority, like the person said earlier. And when you come out to teach the truth, you are the enemy. We say it all the time. If Christ was here, based on the wickedness of this earth, even the churches, they would come out and put him back on the cross. The churches would hang him back on the cross. Because Christ has come to shed light on this dark world. And because you love darkness, you don't want to receive the love of the truth. We're not getting paid out here. We're not looking for vain glory. We're here because the Most High sent us to talk to you. So you cannot say, when that time comes, you were not, you were not warned. You were not warned. Read. Give me Hosea 4 and 1. And it's amazing that the most pushback we'll get will be they of our own. They give us the most pushback. We're only here to tell you that your time is coming. That if you, if you believe in Christ, that your opportunity will come. We're only here to tell you that this captivity we call America will soon come to an end. How is that not salvation? <laughs> How is that not salvation? He said he'd come here many days and never hear us preach salvation. All we preach is salvation and repentance and change. Hosea 4 and 1. You don't want this change, you want the change you think Barack Obama can give you. Barack Obama is not here for change. Alright? A lot of you think that because a black man is running for president, that your life is going to change, but it will change for the worse. And if he is president, they'll screw everything up and blame it on him. Hosea 4 and 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. He have a controversy with you, our people. We have walked away from the Most High. We walk away and we ignore Him daily. You don't have to hear this because we're saying it. Think about it, man, when you to yourself. How many things you do a day and, and, and weigh it with whether or not the Most High wants you to do it? How many times you pray before your actions? We have brought the work from our God. We don't pray no more. We're too busy dealing with gadgets and electronics. It's keeping you busy. Now, every minute, even if you're on a pallet, you're on a cell phone. We're not connecting with the Father no more. Read it again. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of this land. The earth is even crying out for you, and she's telling you that something is wrong. You can't even breathe the air. You can't even eat vegetables, which are supposed to be healthy, without the vegetables killing you. The earth is even crying out, telling you something is wrong. I remember one time, they would tell you we need to eat healthy. And now you can't eat anything without dying, man. The earth is crying out and telling you something is wrong. But you're too busy to listen to what the Most High say. But soon, but soon, you're going to hear something. And it's going to stop everything. Soon the Most High is going to say enough. He's going to say enough and he's going to wish you listened. He's trying to talk to you. He's trying to tell you something. But you're too busy to listen. 
You're too busy to hear it. Why? Really? Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. That's why the Lord has a problem with this land. There is no truth here. No mercy or knowledge of God. You go to your pastor to tell you the truth. He won't tell you the truth. He'll tell you what it will take to get his pockets fat. The truth does not pay. Because when preachers deal with truth, he will tell you what's coming out of this Bible, even if you have five parishioners. Even if there's only ten people in this church. Because if you tell the truth, many will not come. How can you tell your congregation that Christ was, really was not born on December 25th? It was not Nimrod's birthday. Nimrod's birthday. So if he was to tell his congregation that, how much money would he lose? So he can't tell you the truth. He has to live the lie to keep his to keep his family fed, to keep his bills paid, to take his children and take them on trips off of your money. A preacher, if he was real, he would tell you in Jeremiah the 10th chapter, thank you brother, he would tell you in Jeremiah the 10th chapter, you're not supposed to have a tree in your house. That it's paganism. It's idolatry. But the truth does not pay. Somebody pass me that paperwork I had real quick. I need that paperwork I had. I'm going to show you that every holiday you are worshiping here in America is attached to a pagan demon. Even the day they gave you Martin Luther King Day, they was worshiping the same day in Rome. They just named it Martin Luther King Day so that the spirit of your prayers can give that God power. All your days you're worshiping here are satanic. You name it. President's Day. Christopher Columbus Day. Martin Luther King Day. Every holiday is satanic right here. This is what I want. I downloaded this. Because this was very interesting to me. This was very interesting to me because we are people with who love truth. And you would think that a people that have been lied to since they've come over here on the ships would want truth. But you want to stay in the lie when the Lord is telling you that something is about to change and you're not listening. So because we love truth, we go and do the research for you. And then it's up to you. You're going to find that every God you're worshiping here is a pagan God and was worshipped in pagan Rome. We are in Rome all over again. The Christianity you're following is from the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. The architecture you see here is all Rome. Look across the street on your post office building. That's a Roman God sitting on a pillar with an eagle behind him. And it's a Roman man with breasts. That's a man with women breasts. These are the gods that you are following here in America. I'm going to give you, I will give you the actual Roman name of each holiday that you're celebrating. And because we're in a slave mentality, because you're in a slave mentality, you're taught not to look beyond what you're taught. Your religious, your, your higher learning schools, your colleges are all part of the deception. And the information is right in front of you, but you're too busy to figure it out. Give me 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. I need someone to come up here with me real quick. Come up here and grab this microphone. Because we're going to teach truth out here. Don't look for your president to tell you the truth. Don't look for your religious leaders to tell you the truth. We 
I'm preaching Jesus. Jesus, truth. And that's why they hung Christ on a tree. Because he was bringing truth in a wicked Roman world. So we're here to teach truth and bring light into darkness. All this morning. Yes, give everyone one. It's okay. It's okay. A lot of you think you're following Mary in the Roman Catholic Church, right? No, no, no. Before she was Mary in ancient Rome, her name was Diana. The Greek goddess, the, hunted, the, the hunter goddess. There's another name for her. Artemis. Now you wonder, what is the significance of Artemis? Artemis was the queen mother of heaven being worshipped in Rome. And every birthday, every pagan birthday for the Romans, they would bake a cake to the queen mother of heaven and put candles on it so it can light like the moon. And bring it to the feet of Artemis and pray. That's where you get your birthdays. That's where you get your birthday cake from the queen goddess Artemis. And if you didn't do this, the spirits would haunt you and attack you for the rest of the year. So now, they switched it to happy birthday. And have you baked the cake and you haven't recognized that a spirit is attached to it. How do we know that? Because before you cut the cake, you do what? You make a wish. You make a wish to the Queen Goddess Artemis to make sure the spirits don't follow you for the rest of the year. It's pagan Rome. Pagan Rome. You might think that you're following Jesus in the Roman Catholic Church, but no. Who you're really following is Juno. As a matter of fact, let me correct that. Jupiter or Zeus. What is Jesus? Hey, Zeus. Constantine integrated pagan worship with Christianity in the 4th century AD. Okay? The Christianity you're following today, okay, is not the Christianity that Christ was teaching. That's right. It's the Antichrist movement. When Christ warned us before he was crucified, he told us, but be, don't, don't let no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, so that I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you're going to find out that many is your Roman Catholic and your Christian churches that you have today. Oh, you might think Christ was born December 25th. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to worship Christ's birthday. Nowhere in the Bible is it recorded Christ's birthday. The Romans were following December 25th while Christ was living. How is that? Because they were following the, the, the God Jupiter slash Nimrod slash Zeus slash Osiris slash Tammuz so all the nations of this earth been following these same days for years and Christians have never worked up to this to realize that it's nothing but a knockoff of the ancient Babylonian worships the Bible is true but we found out they're not teaching from the Bible to. Give me Jeremiah the 10th chapter and let's see if the Christmas tree is in the Bible. And we're going to go through each holiday that you celebrate here. And you're going to find out there's a God attached to every one of them. Let's get Psalms, the 96th chapter. And see, the Lord says, We are a chosen people unto the Lord thy God. 
The Lord had chosen us to be a special people about all people that are upon the face of the earth. For the Lord had a people that would be separated from these pagan gods. And when these people fell, they were put in the hands of the Gentiles who were worshiping pagan gods. So when we started reading and tried to come back to our father, we got trapped by the snare of the devil that led us back into the pagan worships of our masters. But now Christ said, you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we will tell the truth, even if it means our lives. Because Christ put his life on the line for truth. That's what we need here today, man. That's what we need in this society. We need truth. We're screaming for it. We're begging for it. We're asking for it. Let's see if the Christmas tree is in the Bible. And this, this surprised me more than anything when I first read it. I went to a pastor and showed the pastor this scripture. And told him what the Bible said. He read it himself. And then two days later in the wintertime, he put up a tree in his church in spite of what God told him through a servant. That's all I am. I showed him, listen, don't, don't follow me. Where do the Yule Law come from? The Yule Law that you see burning in your fireplace every December 25th. It's a European pagan ritual. For the Yule child, the Antichrist child. Because the mother asterisk of Babylon conceived this Antichrist child during the springtime. That's why you celebrate Easter, the God is a star. And this wicked child was conceived late December. That child was Nimrod who built a tower to try to fight against. God himself. That was the first antichrist that you are following in this pagan world. And I'm sorry it's about the children. I have children and none of them miss Christmas because I never gave it to them. Someone must break the chain. It's not for the children. It's because you want your child to feel how you felt when you were deceived. Let's get the Christmas tree. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. The Lord tell us not to learn the way of the heathen. I'm not a Roman. So why am I following Roman customs? Because my four parents were slaves and were taught Roman customs. We don't belong here. We are out of place here. The Lord tell us, learn not the way of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. And we are not dismayed at the signs of heaven that you see. Because the heathens are dismayed at them. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. They are what? Are vain. Your customs and your traditions we're learning here are vain. Vain means. It has no value when it comes to the Creator. So why are you trying to put Christ and God in your holidays? Because Satan appears as an angel of light. Satan is masking himself through these holidays and having you worship him. Right? For one cut of a tree out of the forest. One do what? One cut of a tree out of the forest. Now the Bible is going through the vain customs. One will cut a tree out of the forest. Like your pine tree. Your palm tree. Read. Right? The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? They deck it with silver and with gold. Back then they were decking the tree. They grew up over Nimrod's grave every December 25th with real gold and real silver. Now, 
you go to these Walgreens and the gallery and these different stores and you buy silver tinsel and gold tinsel because we're too poor to put real gold or silver on it like we did in ancient Babylon. That's where this custom come from. And see, they purposely put the gifts under the tree so that every morning your children and you can bow under the tree. So what are you doing? That's a form of worshiping an idol. You don't lit up an idol. And now you're bowing down to it. Then they have it wrapped up in this metallic paper representing the, the gold and the silver you had to put under the tree in ancient Babylon. And if those of our people that did not follow this custom, if you rejected it, your heads would roll. That's the bulbs you put on your tree. And then the tree is not complete unless you take a five-pointed star and put it on the top of the tree. The five-pointed star is the Bethlehem symbol of Satan himself. You turn the star upside down and it's a goat head. A goatee. Two horns and two ears. Red. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with their nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is, is it in them to do good. The Lord told us, don't be afraid of them. Why? Because there was a rule that whoever, whoever denied this custom in ancient Babylon would die. So Ramesses, Nimrod's mother saw that, that Nimrod's spirit was in the tree. December 25th had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Okay? Had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Easter Sunday does not have nothing to do with Jesus Christ rising from the grave. It's the goddess of star. Nimrod's mother slash wife. That's who you celebrate. That's why it's Easter, a star. And the pagan church is so wicked. And in and, and Acts the 12th chapter, they took out the word Passover in the English and put Easter there. So that they'll have you worship Easter. You cannot get three days between Friday and Sunday. Christ died and rose, and it took three days and three nights. If you're on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, what's that? Two days. And there's a reason that in spite of any other holiday, Easter fall on a Sunday every year. Every other holiday fall on different days, but why does Easter Sunday fall on Sunday? Because they're celebrating the spring solstice. When the new moon comes in for the spring solstice, which was celebrated in ancient pagan Rome. And they was following this day before Christ was born. You gotta wake up. Now the question is, why would they have us follow these days? Why? Because you are God's people. And your prayers have power. So if they can get you to follow their God when you pray, you'll give strength to their God. And therefore, the people that gave you your God will continue to rule over you. You can't break free from your captivity if you're worshiping the gods that have enslaved you. Corinthians 10 and 20. Some people say, teach love. Is this not love? How long have we been lied to? Truth is love, man. If you love me, tell me the truth. You say that in relationships. 
damn if you love me, just be truthful with me. The truth is love. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20, please. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devil. They sacrifice to what? They sacrifice to devil. The Lord says the thing that the Gentiles and the Gentiles are the people that are ruling your earth today. What they sacrifice, they sacrifice to devil. Why do the Bible say sacrifice? With all your holidays come what? Feast. That means many animals must die to celebrate that God on that day. Look how many turkeys are sacrificed on Thanksgiving. To a God that gave these people power to destroy a people in this earth. God's people. And as you saw over here, even in the churches, happy Thanksgiving. What you doing for Thanksgiving? How can you be a man of God or a woman of God celebrating Thanksgiving? A day when millions of Indians were slaughtered. Was that not their God too? Did God love the Indians? So how can you say, well, I know it was about that, but I do to thank God. If you're going to thank God, why would you thank Him on a day that, that was known for straight wickedness and murder and killing? Wake up. You're giving power to their gods. I will never eat anything. I, I won't eat nothing. I will never eat on a Thanksgiving anything. In total defiance of the gods of this world. Because I know our God is the true God that's not being taught in this earth. And our God is going to bring pain on this wicked world. And deliver the few that would come back to him. You don't know about the most high in Christ in this world, man. You haven't learned of him. Because Satan got in the church well before your parents came on cargo slave ships. You've, you've been taught a satanic doctrine from Europe. And then you're going to the, to the people that have been lying to everyone to tell you the truth about God. Wake up. Read. Really? But I say the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. The Lord do not want us to have fellowship with devils. I will not celebrate any holiday. I have to do the research. We owe that to ourselves. We owe that to our children. Let me make sure I research everything I'm partaking in. Because if it's wrong, I'm going to teach my child the right way. Right? You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devil. You cannot say you're down with God and you're worshiping a day that was known in Satan and pagan worships. Well, I worship on Sunday. Okay, that's good you worship on Sunday if that's what you want to do. But I didn't say, or, or the Most High God or higher, did not say, remember the, the first day of the week to keep it holy. He said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That's Saturday. And he said, remember, because he knew Satan would come in and make everyone forget. Okay. If the Most High God said worship on Saturday, what would Satan do? The reverse. God said the seventh day of the week. Satan said, okay, we'll do it on the first day of the week. To worship what? The sun. Not the S-O-N. That's what they're telling you. The S-U-N. Why? Because the pagans will bear the sun as a god. Even before them, they worshipped the sun in ancient Egypt. They even got with the philosophers. And taught, made the philosophers teach you in their high colleges that everything revolves around the sun. Which is a lie. The earth was created before the sun and everything revolves around the Most High's first creation, which is the earth. The heaven and the earth. Satan is in charge of your churches. He's in charge of your religious institutions. He's in charge of your higher learning institutions. Read. 
You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You can't say I'm done with Christ and God, but continue to follow Satan. The Lord ain't planted it no more. The Lord says, choose you this day which God you're going to follow, because there's many gods. Give me Psalms 96 and 5. He has that. Read. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't say you're down with the most high and you're down with devils. Christmas, devils. Thanksgiving, devils. Easter, devils. Devils. Not with the King Day. Let me tell you, they didn't give you a mark of the King Day. I'm going to tell you the day that really is. Hold on. Okay. Usually, Martin Luther King fell, what, about February 13th? Right? No, it's in February. January what? What the? Give it to me. January what? 15th? I want you to see something, sister. Come here. Here you go. Come over here, look. Here's the holidays in ancient Rome before America was... Let me do that over there. Here's the dates. Carmentalia from January 11th through the 15th. So when we started marching saying we want a holiday for Martin Luther King, they said, sure, we'll give you one. And they picked an ancient Roman holiday so that our people can pray and keep the, the gods that they have over us. Carmentalia was an ancient pagan ritual. Um, Carmentalia was, was if, I, if I'm correct, I studied Saturnalia. Carmentalia was, was a god that would pray to, that would usher out the winner. That would usher out the winner. So they would pray to this god during this period so that they can have less bitter winners. All right? This is, this is, here it is. You think you're following Christmas on December 20th. Hold on, I got it all for you. I got more for you. Look at this. In February. In February, you got what? Farnelia. And you got, in February, you got Cornicalia, which is the corn festival in honor of Fornax. Fornax was a Roman god. Also in February, you got Parentelia. And notice they give you all these gods. And what, what month is February? It doesn't know I'm black. <laughs> exactly. What, what this, um, for it's Black History Month. Yeah. And they give you all these different uh, uh, festivals they give you during that time. Yeah. It's on the days for their gods. So that you, your spirit can uphold the gods that have enslaved you. I have to copy it for you. Here it is. Here's more. Let's go straight to it. Fourth of July. Wait, let, let's get July real quick. Right? Let, let's see where July is. July 5th. You read it. Ludi. Ludi Apollinaires. Ludi Apollinaires. That was July 5th. What day was that? Celebrated with games in honor of Apollo. And games in honor of Apollo. That's your 4th of July, sister. They were celebrating these things in honor of Apollo before uh, before there was an Independence Day. Our people still in slavery in 1870. So it really represents all the guns except so, the one yeah. okay, but, but let's make it clear. Before captivity, before we were here, the Romans were celebrating around the 4th and 5th. They're just switching the names so that everybody can partake and uphold Apollo. Let's get to it. You might have uh, October 13th. What's that? Uh, Christopher Columbus Day? Oh, they tell you. Christopher Columbus Day. 
When you come and discover the miracle on October 13th? No, nope. it's Fornalia Day in ancient Rome. Fornalia. What they did? They just masked all the Roman gods and all the Roman holidays and gave it you gave you something that you can relate to, so that you would never think that you were worshiping demons. Oh, let's get Thanksgiving in here. Let's see if we got Thanksgiving. Here it is. November the 4th through the 17th, which is Plebeal. That's another, you notice each month it have one. Here's another. From December 17th to the 23rd, Saturnalia. Saturn, which is a planet. That's what you're worshiping. Now let's see, what do you say? I want you to read Saturnalia for me, sister. Okay. Just read it on the Saturday. December 17th through 23rd, the festival of Saturn celebrated in ancient Rome at the end of the vintage and harvesting with feasting and unrestrained merrymaking. With feasting and unrestrained merrymaking. Did that sound familiar? Read. Really? It honored Saturn, the good of agriculture. The god of agriculture. Sorry, the god of agriculture. Go ahead. Observe it. Included exchange of presents. It, it did what? Exchange in presents and offering sacrifices. And offering sacrifices. Here's the key. Some people may wonder why you get your bonus checks and your boss treats you so good during the Christmas time. Let's see you do this. Explain that. Read where it says masters. Masters serve their slaves as a token of the e equality of rank. Masters serve their slaves as a token of the equality of rank. There's your Christmas parties. There's your bonus checks because your boss must serve you to get the power to be your master next year. Read. And the lack of class distinction during the golden age which was supposedly ruled over by Saturn. By who? Saturn. Saturn. Santa. Saturn. Santa. Uh, Satan. Satan. Do that sound familiar? Read. Many Christian customs are derived from the from this festival. Many Christian customs are derived from this festival. We know the devil mad now. We and we have church. If y'all want to come learn the truth, we're willing to teach it.